Right click, there's that. All right, um, can you guys all see my screen now? With yes. like mm -hmm. 14 events on it? Yep. Rad. Okay, so we'll do some Florida Man stuff first. Obviously. <laughs> so this story happened like right after our last one, but so courts around the country are doing a lot of like remote work and this judge in Florida actually had to have a separate call with the lawyers involved, reminding them that they were still lawyers and needed to dress like they were going to court. You can oh. just from, like, to the waist up. Because apparently one of them came in wearing just like a tank top for like official court proceedings and he was judge here was not having it awesome yeah that's fantastic and presumably one of the people that was in court was this guy who um on just a cocktail of weirdness uh believed he was being chased by dinosaurs and making noise outside the house so his mom shot him he's a liar <laughs> but it's some peak floridaing right there how many drugs do you think not I enough. could not begin to speculate. It's Florida, probably <laughs> definitely <lot>. bath salts. <laughs> I mean, probably that was the big thing in Florida for a while. So let's say bath salts. <laughs> and then this one was just good fun. Uh, guy spent one hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars on a Bugatti Veyron, which is way less than you would normally pay for one of those cars. Um, and it was actually just a Mercury Cougar uh, with a body <laughs> kit on it. So, you know. Florida man remains an entrepreneur and a criminal at the same time. It's so sad. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, that, that is like a $750,000 car, like minimum. Because when they fired Conan O'Brien from NBC, he rented one for a week and just spent NBC's money on stupid stuff in his last week. And he had a Bugatti Veyron there for a while. Oh my God. Um, that's I'm a well sorry. over $2 million car, by the way. <laughs> Good Lord. Good Lord. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's worth a little more than a Mercury Cougar. Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> that's a really expensive car. Just a little bit. <laughs> Wonderful. It's a really good body kit, though. Yeah, no, it's fancy. I mean, it's probably worth, like, I don't know, $60,000, but still, it's a body yeah. kit. Yeah. Whatever. All right. As we said, there's a whole lot of corona going on. So, whew. Let's get started. If you guys want to jump in at any point because you did your story on this, you are more than welcome to. No. Um, the big thing to start off with here is the president claimed earlier this week total authority over compelling states to reopen, which, as we have all done federalism, is we know that's not how states work. Um, he does not have the ability to compel that unless there had been a law passed by Congress that gave him the power to do that. Congress didn't do that because the governors did it like of their own volition, right? The governors chose to shut down the states, thereby the person who has the power to open the state is the governor. It's the same reason they're the ones that closed the states, or in the case of South Dakota, didn't really close the state. <laughs> Oops. Um, <laughs> so he's backed off of that in like the last two days. Is um, Oh, he's he backed off a lot of things he said about the coronavirus. Uh, imagine that. <laughs> um, it, yeah, it's it's nuts. I was I was listening to a uh, a constitutional law podcast that I listen to because of course I do. Um, <laughs> out of, uh, nothing less. Yeah, it's it's good. Um, it's, it's normally like national security stuff. It's it's two law professors at the University of Texas Austin, but they were talking about how there is there is no like constitutional argument that either of them could make. Like one of these guys is like the assistant dean at UT Law, which is like one of the bigger law schools in the country. He's like. It, it doesn't make sense. I can't make this argument ever. Um, Was it, is it the same guys that the podcast you sent me that one time? Uh, no, it, that's a different one. It's They are hosted on the same site, but they are two different websites. Two Where different do you websites. watch your podcasts, Mr. Polking? Where do I what? Where do you watch your, or listen, I guess, to your podcast? Oh, um, just the, the podcast app on my phone, like the, nice. the purple nice. iTunes one. Oh, okay. Do you buy them? Um, no, I've never found the need to pay for podcasts. There's enough good free stuff out there. And also I had issues with that in college, trying to like help friends get pay for podcasts. And it just seems like it's a hassle. So no, I, I do too. I like government ones that comes up in this class is there's the, the lawfare one, which is like national law and international relations. And then 
whatever this one out of Austin is that I started listening to a couple months ago. If you really want, I can find the name. The NSL podcast, National Security Law podcast. But they were saying there's no real good case for that. Like the only way the president could get involved with that is if it if he made some sort of compelling legal argument that by having the states closed down, they were harming interstate trade. But because the governors are only closing uh, um, non-essential buildings or non-essential businesses in their own state, there's no real argument that can be made that they're harming the business of other states. So that is the closest you could get to making an argument for it. And apparently it's not very good and would not stand up in court especially because it was pointed out on this podcast, the person who hates that argument the most is Clarence Thomas, who as one of the conservative justices would likely vote with everybody on either side that was against it. And so he'd be sort of the spoiler there. So don't expect that to happen. So long story short, the president has backed off this and said, well, the governors are gonna take like a three-step approach to this they can address whenever they're ready. Um, the other thing that came up today um, is he's called for the liberation of states. Um, the states that he's called to be liberated are all run by Democratic governors, um, and they're all battleground states. So clearly this is more of a Great. way to shore up some votes for the fall. Great. But um, this started in Michigan, where a bunch of people got super mad that they could not go work wherever. And um, they started protesting in downtown Lansing, the capital. Oh, yeah. And, you know, exposing each other and, you know, all sorts of that stuff. So it's happened. He's called for it in Michigan, in Virginia, and there's one other state. But again, two, I mean, Michigan, especially battleground state. Virginia has, as we've talked about, drifted pretty blue over the last couple of years. Um, just because more and more people live in the kind of urban north of Virginia now than used to, and they tend to vote Democrat. But um, he's still going after governors that he doesn't like. In most states, he hasn't really gone after Governor Bullock, probably because it's a red state and nobody here is complaining like in mass movements. And also yeah. he is in charge of like the, what, the organization of governors or whatever. And it's probably not a good idea to you know, attack the guy that is their spokesperson. So, I have a question. Is yep. Montana a battleground state? Not really for president. Um, we are sort of weird because we are a complete toss up when it comes to senatorial elections, but historically in the house over the last like 20 years, no. And for president, no. Yeah. Cause I, I, I red state when it comes to presidents but we have uh, both two democratic senators and a democratic governor which no one democratic senator tester's a democrat oh sorry I thought, republican. I thought dan's was democrat sorry no nope, okay. he's a republican okay thank you Grant. <laughs> yeah. if um, you've ever met dan's you'd know right away <laughs> and I'll, i mean honestly that's one of the things that makes it a little weird that the president hasn't said anything is because bullock is running against dan's this fall so you'd think he would go after Bullock for, you know, some sort of democratic overreach argument to shore up Danes' position in the state. So um, he's kind strange, of but. he's found his own votes, I think. Yeah. Um, next oh. up, governors are starting to work in regional groups to plan reopening. Um, so there's two of these groups as of earlier this week. Um, basically the West Coast three are all working together. So Washington, Oregon, and California, uh, the governors there are all talking to make sure they're all on the same page with what their social distancing requirements will be once um, non-essential businesses can reopen or there's limited reopening, stuff like that. And the same thing with, um, it's like New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts, and who else? Maybe like Delaware or something. But those states are, governors are all sort of working together to have similar plans on what they're going to do because as we've kind of seen the White House says one thing one day and another thing another day. So it comes down to like regional governors essentially 
saying, here's what we are all going to do in this area because, you know, our populations are relatively homogenous and they all, you know, travel to each other. So we want to all be on the same page. I feel like that's better of an idea than letting the White House tell every, like, state what to do at once. And it seems to be relatively popular. And also, it's one of those things where when you look at sort of the goals of conservatives and liberals, um, it seems to be working out pretty well across the board. And it's, it's led to that pushback against the president from all sides is that this is federalism in action, right? Is it's states taking ownership of state issues. And if they choose to work with another state, they can, but they don't have to. And the federal government is just sort of there to provide broad oversight and advice. So when the president pushed back against this, a lot of conservatives, especially in the Senate, like Mitch McConnell came out and said like, you can't go after them for this. This is literally what our party stands for, is the ability for states to call their own shots. So you have to let them call their own shots. So that's another reason that he might not be going after red state governors as much is just like, it's, it's what you signed up for living here. Um, continuing to go, people have pushed back, especially in the last week and a half or so, against the way the president is conducting his White House briefings, basically using them as campaign events. This went um, to a possibly illegal place last week. Um, I'm sorry, earlier this week. Um, the president put out a video of all the great stuff he has done as a result of his dealing with the coronavirus here, and also used it to attack the press and some Democrats. The problem with that was, is that he A, used a government platform to do it, he used a White House briefing, and two, or B, I guess, sorry, um, White House staff put this video together. And the problem with that is it violates what's called the Hatch Act. It says you can't use official government time or money to run for office. So when you guys saw when we talked about the House schedule in the notes, what was it this week? Um, like people are given days off essentially from Congress to go campaign explicitly so they don't violate the Hatch Act. But the president, by doing this, has, on paper at least, violated the Hatch Act. Will anybody go after him for this? Certainly not. But it is just sort of another thing where the president has not been using the press briefings to distribute information. Um, in fact, he's sort of trying to rewrite history, like it says here, as to what actions he has taken in the past and how that has you know, somewhat alienated a good chunk of Americans that might or might not have been on the fence with him in the fall. Um, and then you've got Dr. Fauci having to come in and kind of troubleshoot everything that's being said and is being like, no, that's not correct. Or Dr. Burke's coming in and being like, no, that's not actually correct. In fact, we meant for you to do this instead. So Ugh. there's that. All right. Um, economists looking at this right now are saying worldwide, probably a year to a year and a half to get the economy fully up and rolling again to the degree that had, it had been before. So this is not like nothing will get back to normal within a year or a year and a half. This is saying that to regain those jobs that had been created over the last six years that have since gone away due to unemployment, um, to get people feeling confident again and going out and buying stuff is that is going to take some time because the people that were laid off that weren't just furloughed um, have to go look for new jobs and the people that were furlough, furloughed have to wait the explicit amount of time that they were said or told you know you can't be here for the next two weeks three months whatever so it will take a good amount of time for the economy to sort of build up a head of steam again uh my story is related to that go for it okay so uh, I read the article, an article on ABC News that said that uh, unemployment has rose to 5.2 million Americans, mm -hmm. which is crazy, but it's also kind of fun because my uncle works at unemployment here mm -hmm. in, in Helena, and so he's like overworked, <laughs> obviously. Business is booming, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. And it's like people, so many people in like the state cannot get in because so many people are on the website at the same time. Like the calls are always full. 
Yeah, it's it's rough. And I know um, on top of that, that the uh, the small business loans that got approved during the relief package a couple weeks ago, the website for that um, cannot talk with the Treasury website because part of the Treasury website, for those of you who have done coding, is written in COBOL, which was like the coding language of like the 60s and 70s. <laughs> So they were like desperately looking for weeks to get people who like knew how to write in COBOL to come in and fix this stuff. And now they're getting swamped with all these applications and now they're having trouble getting money out. On top of that, some of the checks that are being sent out, if people don't have a bank account for a direct deposit, it's taking longer because um, the treasury department now needs to print the president's name on the checks. Normally it was just of whichever treasury person was in charge of the printing like that week. So it would be like, you know, Jim Jones is the, you know, the person in charge of printing these checks for the week of March, you know, 14th through 17th, and you get Jim's signature on your relief check. I don't think and that's a good example thing to use. I, you know, I realized it after I said it, but, um, you know, whatever. Yeah, don't drink the Kool-Aid, kids. Um, Fauci has been warning basically everybody at every press conference well, to not go back to um, work and like normal too soon because even though the curve is flattening out, it is not flattened yet. We are past the apex of it, but we are not all the way down to flat yet. And so if we only like stop here instead of down here, then it can pop right back up. That's what people, people are like comparing it with like meds and stuff like that because mm -hmm. you like, or like antibiotics or something, like they prescribe exactly. it to you. <clears throat> and then if you feel better, you stop taking it and then you just all of a sudden stop feeling better. It's like, that's, that's kind of how it works, you know? Exactly, is that it needs to run its course as it were. Um, while we're on that- it Only run its course. <laughs> bad medical advice. Um, <laughs> there were two yesterday, um, Laura Ingram asked, why we can't let people go back because there's no vaccine for AIDS. And Dr. Fauci had to explain that, you know, AIDS is not transmissible through, you know, air. And then um, the argument was made by Dr. Phil, noted, oh. noted physician, Dr. Phil, that oh, we should all go back to normal immediately because um, more people are drowning in pools. Dr. Phil said that? Dr. Phil said that in... Really? I swear to God, I've been following him on this whole thing, and I never heard him say that, but I believe look on it. on Twitter. It happened last night. I can't look on Twitter. I got blocked out of my Twitter account last night. Make another Twitter account. <laughs> it's not that I, hard. I want mine. I have, like, 100 followers. Yeah. Didn't oh, posting one of those uh, Whatever. female Fox News ladies say something about, like, how it's called COVID-19 and not COVID-1. That was not Fox News. That was <laughs> Kellyanne Conway, the president's personal spokesperson. <laughs> yeah, even better. Yes, and her argument was that the World Health Organization, which the U.S. has sent cut off funding for, um, yep. and not completely without reason. Like, we shouldn't defund them, but they also were doing some stuff in China that was um, ethically dubious, let's say. Like, they were not making good judgment calls with reporting what was happening in China. Um, oh. Yeah, um, and Conway basically said that it's the World Health Organization's fault that it got up to 19, like it's a level in a Pokemon game, as opposed to, no, this is the coronavirus that came out in 2019, therefore COVID-19. And everybody's like, oh, is that what it means? Like, yes. <laughs> Some people, honestly. Some people, indeed. This is that expertise thing again. Do your homework. Um, so let's see. So um, presidential support is dropping. It's down a decent amount over the last couple of days. So it's kind of back to where it was, which is there's that, you know, plus or minus 8% at around like 36% that is in favor of the president no matter what. And, you know, you've got the other 35% that hates him no matter what. But um, support is down after the little bit of like the emergency bump, if you will, that every president gets after something terrible happens. Um, in New York, cases are plateauing, but that does not mean that the curve is starting to turn yet. It means it's flattened out and that's about it. There are a number of rather disturbing articles all over kind of New York and New Jersey that have come out in the last couple of days 
of just massive casualties at um, nursing homes. Like yeah, their death tolls are rising pr like exponentially. Yeah, we're um we're taking a lot of precautions right now. I got a million texts from my boss about um, masks and gloves around residents and stuff like that after that happened. Yeah, like there there was one in uh I think it was New Jersey where they have like a little a little morgue in the back for you know it's it's an elderly facility, um that was built to hold like you know four and they had twenty nine bodies in there that they needed to take out. Yeah. Like how they use refrigerated trucks to like move bodies like as a mass. Yeah. It is heartbreaking. Yeah, it's it's rough. Um. So, I mean, that, that goes back to that idea of just because it's plateauing doesn't mean that it's stopped yet. Um, the national stockpile of PPE that we had um, is basically depleted at this point. Uh, Jared Kushner, uh, the president's son-in-law, who has no expertise in this whatsoever other than the fact that he's related to the president, um, misspoke and said that the federal government um, gets to choose, or uh, basically like it is their stockpile and states have to get their own. And so... If you want, I have the before and after of their website right here explaining what this national stockpile did. Yeah. Really short, the original website was like, it's here so we can distribute it to states as states need it. So basically a state comes up, rings the buzzer and says, hey, we need this amount of extra personal protective equipment um, to work in our hospitals. And the government says, okay, here is kind of your ration of that. And you can come back again with more explicit requests later on. And they rewrote the website afterwards to basically say like, nope, it's the government's for the government to use and everybody else can figure it out on their own. That's so messed up. It's not great. So yeah, um, and then there's been more scammy stuff over at FEMA. If you guys remember after um, the hurricane hit Puerto Rico, Ryan Zinke gave, uh, when he was running uh, FEMA, gave a, or working with FEMA, sorry, um, gave a contract to some company up in Whitefish that had like four employees to build the entire power grid for Puerto Rico, which is shady. Um, and something similar happened with um, FEMA giving a PPE contract to a company that was currently bankrupt that had like two employees for like $55 million worth of stuff that they did not have. Thanks. Government oversight is important folks. Um, before we move on to our next thing about even more COVID news, any questions on this stuff? Nope. Red. All good, boss. Yeah, I think we all got it down. Oh, no, but th there's, see, there's more. There's more. Great. Let's see. Let's go. Let's keep going. Yeah. <laughs> um, drug companies have taken, and this is not all of them, this is some of them, have taken some short-term steps, unfortunately, only short-term, to capping insulin prices. Um, they're not doing it permanently, but they're basically saying oh. that it's over. They're going to, one producer of, um, insulin was capping it at like $35 when it had been. May I speak upon this? Oh yeah, yeah. Shannon. Should As speak. a fellow diabetic. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, so it's only like six states they're doing it and it's only the one insulin, Lily, which produces like off brand. Like there's a main one, like how? My pump just fell, which is ironic. Um, there's uh, Novo Nordisk, which is like the big one, like almost everyone uses. And then there's like Lily, which is kind of like the, the Kirkland brand versus like, you know, like a name brand. Yeah. And so it's like not, not better. And yeah, it's only like six states that have passed that. Which is not oh, one. No, this, this one I'm talking about is a company decided to do it. Cause I know like Colorado and a couple other States like pass laws that said like it's profiteering if you go over this and we will prosecute you for it. So better than nothing, but still anemic at best. <laughs> it's not good. Um, more news. And again, this stuff is more tangential. The stuff on the previous page is like directly related. This is like as a result. Um, so as you may have been paying attention a couple weeks ago, um, we were supposed to have another batch of primaries and most states said, no, we're not going to do primaries because we don't want to wedge a bunch of people into a voting place, um, and then have them all, you know, cough and sneeze on each other. Wisconsin had a election 
that was tied in. A lot of states will do like local elections or state elections along with um, any sort of primaries in the spring. So Wisconsin's big one was for a state Supreme Court seat. Um, the person on, who had currently held the seat, the incumbent had been appointed by Governor Scott Walker in the middle of the last term after the last person resigned. Um, so conservative justice in Wisconsin, Wisconsin, remember, battleground state. And um, so what happened was the state Supreme Court on party lines, which at the time was five to four uh, conservative, said, nope, um, we're going to say go ahead with this and we're not going to push the election until later on to allow more people to vote by mail. Um, there have been numerous stories over the years um, about how uh, Republicans especially don't like vote by mail because um, Republicans tend to turn out and vote better than Democrats, but if you made it easy to vote from home, then um, the, the common thinking is that Democrats would do better. I will tell you there was a study that came out of Stanford like last week that basically said, no, that's not the case, is people that are gonna vote are gonna vote and people that aren't gonna vote aren't gonna vote. But um, the Supreme Court, again, and this is the federal Supreme Court, um, decided that they are going to allow Wisconsin to go forward with this. And they allowed the vote to happen in person. So if you got your vote by mail stuff, rad, good for you. If you didn't because you were backlogged, because a bunch of people, as soon as this happened, were like, oh my God, I need to vote by mail. And the state couldn't get around to getting everything out to them in time. So those people were screwed. They're on the list for next time, but that's it. Um, so this vote went forward and um, while the voter turnout was less than it had been previously in 2016, um, voter turnout did happen and voter turnout happened in favor of the Democrats by a pretty wide margin to the fact where um, the Democrat running for the state Supreme Court won and pushed the uh, Wisconsin State Supreme Court over to a more liberal leaning bench. Um, so it sort of backfired on the Republicans there. The other big thing that came out of this was one of the uh, lead state representatives. So not the Speaker of the House in Wisconsin, but pretty close, um, was out like giving a speech like, you all need to go out and vote, it's perfectly safe. And he was wearing like a mask and goggles and gloves <laughs> and like full PPE while he was doing this and like speaking in a parking lot and it's like, buddy, right here, we can see that it is not okay to go out. So maybe don't. So that backfired um, for the uh, Republicans in Wisconsin. So right now, the question is, what does vote by mail look like for the fall? And this is sort of going to be the big question going forward is, should the country be gearing up now to just let everybody vote by mail? And the answer is probably like, yeah, if we're not going to give everybody the day off, like we talked about a while ago, and, you know, make it a national holiday, at the very least, make it easier for people to vote. And, you know, the argument there is, you know, you only want the informed people to vote, right? But, you know, if you make it easier for them to vote by mail, does that lead to uninformed people voting? Maybe. But again, the other side of that is, you don't want people dying when they go out to vote, so maybe make voting by mail easier. And didn't, aren't they talking about like defunding the postal office? We'll get there. Yes, they are. But they can't. So you can't vote by mail? Um, yeah, I'm going to shoot some holes in that that are pretty gigantic in a minute. So I wouldn't worry. There, there's a very easy fix to that entire problem. Um, let's see. We talked about the states taking control of response at like a much more local level. Um, as the federal government has not really been giving good guidance on anything. Um, let's see, a private prison in, guess what state? Yes. Florida. Florida. It's always Florida. Um, a private prison there require prisoners to basically sign away any and all medical rights um, in exchange to get any sort of mask or anything in the prison. Um, Aren't they letting inmates go somewhere? What's yes. that? Yes. So aren't they letting inmates go somewhere, like the smaller um, charges? Yeah, white collar criminals are getting let go. So like um, Michael Cohen, um, the guy who testified against President Trump but also committed a bunch of crimes, um, was let go earlier. So yeah, nonviolent offenders 
are being let go. And then you have some people that are famous but are in jail for big crimes um, not getting let go. Like there's that one rapper who's in jail for like a double murder charge. He's like, yeah, but people have the virus in six here. Nine. He's like, you have a six double nine. murder charge hanging over you, bud. Like they're not going to let you go. Um, so yeah, nonviolent um, offenders are getting released where they can. But again, that's at the discretion of the state or even county government in most cases. Like, I don't think the feds are cutting many people loose unless they're in like a club fed already, at which point, you know, now you're under house arrest. It's basically the same thing. Mm, fun. Yeah. Um, there was some talk about Congress doing additional aid packages, but both sides are angry at one another. Um, the House Hi. Democrats and the Senate Republicans um, can't really come to an agreement. Some of that over um, absentee voting, basically. So we'll see where that goes. There's all sorts of proposals flying around that are attempting to make the other side look bad. But again, you have to keep in mind when you're looking at any piece of legislation that's that early on with the proposal, that's half the part of it. And the other part is, is it actually workable? Or are you just doing it to score political points? So you'll hear more about that. Um, they're still working on more aid packages. I would expect, you know, one to get passed somewhere in like October, no matter where we're at, just to score points for both sides. A long way. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, something will probably happen before then, but we'll see. Uh, the president met with and then got some backlash from a bunch of businesses in like sports league owners um, earlier this week. And a bunch of the businesses were kind of mad because their names were used before they were contacted. So the president was like, we've agreed with, you know, this executive from like, I don't know, Merck Pharmaceuticals or something. And Merck was like, you never called us. What are you talking about? Like, you didn't ask us to join this committee. Um, so there's some issues with that. Um, like Walmart, or not Walmart, Target needed to start putting up signs in most of their places. Like, this isn't a drive-up testing center because if you guys remember, the Friday we left, the president gave that speech and said, like, there will be testing centers at CVS and Target and blah, blah, blah. And there are six of them in the entire country. Oh, my God, I can't. I laugh every time I see those signs on Target. Yeah. So there's that. Boris Johnson is not dead. Um, Boris Johnson was in intensive care last week and it looked like he was going to kick the big one and he has since gotten better. Um, but now the bigger issue in the UK is that the guy whose job it is to run emergency response, so kind of like their FEMA, but specifically for the National Health Service, um, he's basically said like, yeah, I don't know how to get this stuff. And I, I, you should do I, it. Uh, yeah, go ahead. So... Who would be like the equivalent of the vice president uh, for the um, prime minister? Like, since there really talking. isn't one because it's not an elected position. You become the prime minister by getting elected within parliament and then appointed by your party. Okay. So there's there's like a cabinet there, and they all sort of function, but there is no like next in line really, like officially. Is there's probably somebody within the party that's like, well, if Boris Johnson dies, then the job will go to this person. But, um, you know, there's nothing like locked in. There is no, con like, remember from the beginning of the year, there's no constitution in England. It's all based on just laws that have been written since 1066. That's it. So it's sort of like you have to paw through literally like a millennia worth of stuff to figure out exactly what law applies in which place. Okay, thank you. Very fun. Um, Yemen, which has been involved in a civil war and a war against Saudi Arabia for the last like four years and has no health service, no infrastructure, is probably about to explode with coronavirus cases and everybody there is super malnourished and sick. So the casualty rate there is expected to be incredibly high. And India basically has no PPE at this point and no real plan and large sections of their infrastructure are terrible. Like there's no plumbing in major cities in some places, like not the entire city, but chunks of it. So um, India is expected, along with Indonesia, Yemen, to sort of be the next place this gets really, really bad. We don't have data from Africa just because they don't even have the ability to do enough testing there to generate data. So that's bad. On the upside, um, air pollution continues to absolutely plummet. Uh, we talked about this last time. So you can like see the Himalayas from in India now. So um, that is impressive. So 
I think the best way to describe this is like the smog in, I mean, even Los Angeles, but um, in especially like subcontinent India and parts of China where like the fires here a couple of years ago were like, you literally could not see from like the school to the other side of the valley, like mm -hmm. all the time. And then imagine it like on a perfectly clear day when you can just see forever is that's what it looks like there now just because nobody's out driving. Well, but apparently like monkeys and pigeons in tourist towns all around the world are very upset because they're used to being fed by people and now they're not. So there's just like roving street gangs of monkeys trying to steal people. <laughs> yeah. The image um, that came to my mind when you said that, it was really entertaining. Oh, you can look it up. It's it's like 60 of them and just like it's just like a flood of monkeys chasing after like one delivery guy on a Vespa. <laughs> That's my dream. Oh my. God. I mean, move to Cambodia and you can have that dream, but I don't think you want to move to Cambodia. Maybe go there on like vacation or something, but that's it. I've heard it's nice. It looks pretty. My sister went there for work earlier this year. Um any questions on any of this stuff before we get to non-corona news? Finally, let's go. <laughs> let's keep rolling. Um, here we go. So the biggest news is Bernie officially dropped out. Joe Biden will be the Democratic nominee. Um, he has since been endorsed by both Sanders and Warren. But um, there are a number of people that were big Bernie supporters, way less with Warren. Um, but a bunch of Bernie supporters are like, yeah, we're still not going to vote for Joe Biden. Um, he needs to promise that he's going to erase all like school debt in America or whatever, like things Bernie had promised. And we talked about, and as you guys will have to do for an assignment later this week, is, is that reasonable? Is that no. something that you can actually believe somebody when they say, as a campaign platform, we are going to wipe out all American, you know, school debt or whatever. Um, so a lot of Bernie supporters aren't super into Biden, which stands to reason. But at the same time, if you don't vote for candidate X, you have candidate Y's. That is essentially, you know, the, the issue with the two-party system in this country is how do you reconcile that? Because, you know, we don't have multiple parties like you would in a parliamentary system. So Political parties are a scam. Literally. You are right, Jack. I agree. You still have yep. to all those well, no, I care. I just, I don't believe in political parties. Well, I mean, you don't believe in them like they don't exist or you don't like the way they operate? I don't like the way they operate. Like, I wouldn't join a political party. All right, yeah. Be a moderate. Welcome to the club. Yeah. Well, Moderacy is fun. I can say Happy that. middle. So, um, questions on Biden-y stuff. I figured I wouldn't put a ton down here and you guys can just sort of ask questions and I can answer what I know about what Biden's looking at doing going forward. Yeah, I got a question. Hit me. How do I end myself without hurting the ones around me? <laughs> Don't. <laughs> so th this is literally a discussion that I've been avoiding having with a friend of mine from high school who is an English teacher in Chicago and also like the biggest Bernie bro in the world is what do you do now? And I, I think it's kind of like I said, is this election basically comes down to do you want somebody who's competent but not particularly inspiring in Joe Biden? Or are you looking at more of, you know, status quo with Donald Trump continuing things the way they are? Because there really is no third party option. Um, but it's more of kind of a reset. And I mean, honestly, this is what people said back in 2016. Whoever wins the 2016 election, then the other party is probably going to win the 2020 election just because they were both so divisive last time. Um, as polling stands right now, Biden holds about an eight point national lead on, um, on Trump. But uh, the big difference here is he holds big amount for turnout in African Americans. But the biggest issue, um, or not issue, group that he has going for him is there's a pretty wide margin, like 55 to 35 percent of women choosing Biden over Trump. Now, obviously, they're still what? 10% there that's undecided. But that is sizable. And obviously, this is all subject to change. And as we saw during the last election, there were a number of moderates that voted for Trump and didn't want to cop to it during, um, you know, the run up to the election, which led to the president sort of winning the election and surprising a lot of people who assumed that Hillary Clinton was going to walk away with it. 
Um, but that seems to have shifted to Biden is the moderates that voted for Trump and hoped that people like Mitch McConnell would sort of keep him in line during, you know, his presidency are disillusioned with the Republican Party's ability to steer the president. And so those moderates, it is projected, and obviously this is just projection, are projected to shift over towards Joe Biden, who's running, running very much as a centrist Democrat. Uh, I have something to say to Brooke. Go. Huh. Brooke, suicide ain't the way. That's not okay. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, no Jack. problem, pal. Um, <laughs> other questions about um, Joe, or I guess like Trump's platform for that matter. I mean, they're both still sort of developing. And Biden won't officially be the nominee until I think the Democratic uh, convention is like August 14th or something like that. It's late this year. I have a question. Yep. Uh, you, you mentioned like to me earlier, like how you uh, never doubt like the incumbent or some, something to that effect. Yeah, the incumbent has a built-in advantage of just name recognition. Um, the arguments referred to as don't change horses in midstream is just, like, you know, let them finish out and do that. But that is not to say that the incumbent always wins. Um, we are in the longest stretch in American history of people serving back-to-back -back terms for presidents because... Um, you had Obama with two terms, you had Bush with two terms, you had Clinton with two terms. Um, before that is you had one term of George H.W. Bush, two terms of Reagan, one term Jimmy Carter, part of a term of Jerry Ford, two Nixons, one Johnson. Kennedy's obviously an exception because he died. But um, What about Carter? Carter got absolutely housed by Ronald Reagan. Oh, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, no, that was the election where he, like, Reagan won, like, all of the states, or, yeah, like, it, except for one or something, George right? Washington, Richard Nixon level, just, like, kicking butt at a national level. America was huge for Reagan. Huge! Yeah. Um, yeah, and, I mean, it didn't hurt that the Iran hostage thing was hanging over Jimmy Carter's head or that he'd given a speech basically saying, like, America needs to do better because we're not great right now. And everybody's like, yo, you can think that, but don't say it. But um, his popularity level was not great. And people just were looking for a change. So No, I mean, I ask you that because, like, um, this is really, like, the craziest time in, like, any of our lives. So it's... How does like the coronavirus affect uh, the, the presidential election, I guess, I'm trying to ask. Uh, voter turnout is going to be huge. And if the president can somehow magically rehabilitate the economy before, you know, the first Tuesday in November, hello dog, um, then he would pick up a bunch of credibility. But if he continues to sort of flail and not do anything, that hurts his credibility even more with moderates. And uh, again, it's always worth pointing out that some states, no matter what happens, will vote Republican. Some states, no matter what happened, will vote Democrat. It comes down to those swing states. So when you see stuff like you know, people protesting in Michigan, that's one thing. But for all the people you see protesting, there's all more moderates in Michigan that are like, hey, um, you know, the number of African-Americans that are dying from the coronavirus in Detroit is ridiculous because we didn't get PPE in time. So maybe those people turn out and vote. Or, you know, what just happened in Wisconsin. Wisconsin is it certainly looks like disengaged voters from 2016 and even 2018 are way more engaged for this election than the last couple. Yeah. I'm sorry, I have another question. Yes, Jack. Uh, I think I know the answer, but is, uh, is Utah a swing state or is it heavily red? Utah is weird. Utah is its own thing. Um, it tends to be yeah, a Republican so state, weird. but not Republicans that tend to play ball. For example, Mitt Romney does not like the president. The president hates Mitt Romney. John Huntsman, the guy who is running for governor, um, is a very moderate uh, Republican and um, looks like he's going to wrap that up this fall. So will they vote for Donald Trump? Probably, but it's not going to be a massive blowout. But yeah, I think you could reasonably assume that those electoral votes will go to the Republican candidate. Do you okay. think this election is going to be more stressful than 2016? 
Uh, I think it will be for you guys because you're not used to this. Okay. I mean, how much were you paying attention in eighth grade? Uh, I, was, but I was paying like um, exactly. I didn't care that much since I couldn't vote, but I was paying a good amount of attention. Yeah, I didn't start caring until I was close to voting age. Uh huh. Um, That's why we had you do this class your senior year. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, it'll you'll get stressed out by it, and um, I'm already stressed by it. I can tell. As um, I yet know that. <laughs> Just, Are just you sure off? you're not just stressed in general? That too. <laughs> yeah. I have a question about Biden. Yep. Does he have any platform that he's going off besides being a gross, creepy old man? Or like, what is he going <laughs> to do? Is that really all it? <laughs> um, I think the platform is that he's not nearly as creepy and he's far friendlier than Trump. Um, <laughs> he's, running, he's running as a moderate that is not going to be Donald Trump. And honestly, for the most part, the fewer things he points out that he's actually going to do, while that may not energize the Democratic base, doesn't really matter because what it will do is it will allow him to be sort of a blank slate to moderates and um, sort of centrist Republicans that are like, well, don't like the way Trump's doing it. I liked the way, you know, Biden handled stuff before. Let's go with that. So if he, like, not literally, but if he figuratively just does nothing, he'll, it's a very good strategy. Yeah, it's kind of what I'm thinking. Okay. Is he's, he'll throw out some stuff to, as a sop to the Bernie folks, but it's going to be pretty moderate and his platform is basically going to be like I will take us back to a time before America had burned off all of its credibility internationally and a good amount domestically. With Biden it's hard though because like you got all the extremists on Bernie's side who aren't going to do anything unless he makes those like extreme tendencies I guess and then like if he does go left even more then you have the moderates who are like well now that's not what I want and then they go to Trump. There's a hell of a lot more moderates out there. And the issue with Bernie, and we, we talked about this two yeah. current events ago, I think, like after the first set of primaries, was that the youth vote that's so theoretically vocal for Bernie didn't turn up to vote for Bernie. They talk about it a lot, but they don't vote. So if you can shore up more middle-aged boomers and elderly people that are going to vote for you, do that because it's a way better place to sink your time and your effort than into your generation who have said it a million times, y'all don't vote a lot. Now, I think that going forward, that is going to change for your generation. Like I expect your voting to tip up a little bit during this election and probably more by the time you guys are like 22 and the 2024 election rolls around. But you guys don't vote. Hey, hey, vote. Don't, don't blame us specifically. We can't vote yet. Yeah, I'm we haven't had the chance. You prove me wrong. Oh my God. Mr. Polking. Sam. I'm sorry, but I have to go. I have another live meeting. Have fun. See you then. Sorry, thank you. Bye, Goodbye. Sam. Bye, Sam. Bye. Wall. Mr. Polking, I'll give you the Jack McDonald guarantee, guarantee that I will vote this election. Good. Me too. You got my guarantee that I will vote this election. I, I will vote. It's not officially registered today, so. I, I mean, our primary hasn't been delayed yet. Our primary is still in like, what, June 6th or something? Something like that. Get yeah, it was early June. I can't vote in my primary. I, I, will, I won't be 18 by then. So. Well, by Hannah the turns 18 today. Happy birthday, Hannah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Also, this is. This is not indicative of literally anything, but it's worth, it's worth pointing out just to illustrate my point. Um, one of the bigger places to vote in Wisconsin um, is the county whose name escapes me, where Madison is. It's where University of Wisconsin is. Ton of people live there. Um, you know, upper middle class, but also a lot of kids. And voted about 60-30 for Biden over Bernie which seems to sort of show that that shift is happening. So if you can wrap up a college town 
even during a lockdown with that many votes for the moderate candidate as opposed to the more extreme candidate, that is oh, noteworthy. I just had one. Um, Mr. Polking? Yes. Uh, it's pretty late. This is a question from a while back, but uh, how much like backlash from the Republican Party did Trump fit get when he made the like complete power claim? More than he's gotten for most other stuff. There were a number of senators and representatives that kind of did the, hey, hold your horses there is like, this is how federalism works. Um, yeah, I so really you're not going to see like, a lot of vocal backlash against it because they still want to be able to kind of draft off of him in the general election, especially. I'm looking up stuff. But yeah, uh, I was confused by that because there has been in other places. That's like pretty strongly against what their party is platforming on. <laughs> Exactly. Is I mean we've we've said it all year, right? Is like big state power, small national power is <laughs> what the Republican Party is theoretically there to do. So mm -hmm. if your president is saying no big government, small state, mm -hmm. it, you have a lot of like you know party vets that are looking around like, what did he, what did he say? That that no, don't do that. I just want yeah, I wanted to know if there were any like senators or something that were. Um, yeah. The big one that came out is the governor of Maryland, who is like the most moderate Republican of all time. And people were sort of hoping was going to run in 2016 and then didn't. Um, he was sort of like a little more centrist than John Kasich out of Ohio. Um, and he was very much like, hey, how about you back off? And a lot of moderate Republicans were like, yeah, you tell yeah. the governor of Maryland who kind of is really like, part of that like yeah. east coast pact thing that's going on um i'm not sure if he's part of that or not it might go down that far i know there's way more in that east coast group than there are in the west and then I, we're kind of on our own because wyoming i have no idea what wyoming's doing in south carolina or uh, south dakota has just been a disaster <laughs> like yeah, has, our state, has our state made any claims about anything like that like when they're going to reopen or no, um, Tuesday well, is kind yeah. of when the next, he tends to talk on Tuesdays is when we expect to hear from the governor again. And theoretically, it would be what, the Tuesday after this upcoming one, that we would be back if schools are not pushed again. He seems to be doing it in like two week increments. Um, I so, think it'll be pushed again. I personally think it should be pushed one more time. I think it case. definitely gets pushed one more time. And then he kind of makes that call from there. I know Mr. Tennis talked with him earlier in the week and he didn't give an indication either way as to what he was planning. Okay, uh, that's what Tuesday was about. Uh, so I was wondering like- Oh, uh, with that email you sent me, yeah. Oh, and I, I told Mr. Markle that I'm, I'm oh, moving. Oh, good, 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 okay. Um, any other stuff on Biden running for president? Uh, unrelated, but I'm gonna leave because my laptop's dying. My blood sugar is very high. Okay. Bye, Shannon. Be healthy. Later. Bye. Bye. Your Stay hands healthy. Right. Bye. <laughs> See ya. Um, so then we talked earlier about Trump threatening the Postal Service um, because it's losing a bunch of money. It did get a loan to basically float it from Congress until September, I think. Here's the problem with the post office. Um, the post office would be making um, a profit if not for a 2006 era um, bill that was passed during the Bush administration that said they need to fund the next 50 years of their retirement packages fully. So basically everybody who works for the post office need, if they're retiring in the next 50 years needs to be ensured that the post office has that money on hand to pay for their retirement, which is ludicrous. Nobody does that. And since that 2006 law passed, um, the post office has been losing money because they need to keep socking it away. Um, if that law were repealed or amended to even like 15 years, the post office would be completely solvent again within like two years. The other problem is the president keeps threatening the post office, but as you may recall, the post office is in the constitution. He doesn't have the power to kill the post office. Um, and another big thing there is he wants to make it all privatized. Um, but the people that use the post office most tend to be rural folks in red states who vote for him that need the post office to function because they are relatively low income and can't pay FedEx to pick up their mail and distribute it. 
Um, the thinking right now is this is based in no small part on the fact that he hates Jeff Bezos, who runs Amazon and the Washington Post. Why does he hate Jeff Bezos? Because who doesn't hate Jeff Bezos? What's that? He said, who doesn't hate Jeff Bezos? How Question do you... Is, what, again, it's why he hates him anyway. Because he runs the Washington Post, yeah. Or he oh, owns- okay, thank you. Um, I mean, most people hate Jeff Bezos because he doesn't pay taxes. No, uh, I'm, no, and he's like, rich and privileged and doesn't pay his workers. The question is why. And bald. Jack, what are you wondering? No, the, I, I was, I'm telling Rick, I was specifically asking why he hated Jeff Bezos. Like, Washington Post. Yeah, uh, yeah. And okay, he's a more okay. successful businessman. Okay. Which is probably <laughs> no small part of it. But um, as for now, the post office isn't going anywhere. And, you know, they're a major federal employer. Do you really want to put more people out of work? Probably not. Um, let's see, Duncan Hunter, the vaping congressman, um, who we recall from the very beginning of the year. Remember, he's the one that was spending $600 in taxpayer money to fly, or in uh, election funds, to fly his rabbit first class, bought thousands of dollars of games on Steam and blamed his son, uh, blamed his wife for taking a bunch of family vacations that he was a member of. Um, He's a representative out of San Diego. Um, got sentenced to 11 months in prison earlier this week. So that sounds like the perfect representative for San Diego. Have you ever been to San Diego? No, no, the perfect representative for San Francisco. Sorry, I was like, well, no, he's not from San Francisco. He's from San Diego, and he's a Republican. And then San Francisco will never elect a Republican in a million years. Never, never mind. Um, locust swarms <laughs> in Ethiopia wiping out crops there. So bad news for Ethiopia. Um, we'll, we'll save the best for last. Um, there's a wildfire near Chernobyl. And the problem with that is, is that it is burning up and drying out a lot of the dust there or a lot of the dirt there that holds radiation. And mm. stuff that is then being pushed into the air. So there's radioactive smoke clouds over parts of Ukraine again. So oh. that sounds like fun. Yeah. It's sort of some end time stuff there. And then lastly, um, but certainly not least important, um, Animal Crossing was removed from the Chinese Switch store because people were um, using their ability to post images in there to protest for Hong Kong, Animal Crossing in China, and um, this greatly upset the Chinese government. So you can't play Animal Crossing in China anymore. <laughs> you know, I, I do wish to travel a lot when I get older, but I yeah, never want to go to China. No. Same. China is scary. It's an open sewer and it's a police state. Um, mm. That is it for everything I've got for you guys. So, what do we got, Bryn? You want to talk? An hour about later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bill Gates has become the new person to make up conspiracy theories about. Yeah, um, because Bill Gates is, you know dropping hard truth about what needs to happen with the curve and all that sort of stuff. Bill Gates also is funding the factories for six possible cures to, or not cures, but uh, vaccines to coronavirus. So whenever the first one gets approved, it's ready to go. Um, yeah. It was like, this won't be profitable, but it's the right thing to do. Um, also worth noting that um, one company, Gilead, um, has a possible, um, it's not a cure, but it, it's, it really lessens symptoms um, that was being tested in, I want to say, New York, and they were doing a clinical trial, and it was incredibly effective. Um, so by the time people, it was given to people that were like on ventilators and was able to stop like severe lung damage and all of that, and like 99% of the people that were treated with this drug were coming out okay. So that seems like a way to, you know, work as a stopgap, I guess you'd say. Yeah. But like they're saying that like he's the person that made corona and that people are dumb. Don't listen to people that say that, especially because they don't have any proof for it other than they don't like the fact that he's saying something. Yeah. My favorite conspiracy involving coronavirus is how the five G towers like caused it in the first place. Yep. Yeah. That's why I had you guys read that article last week is because then you look at who's saying this and it's like oh karen on facebook randy on facebook there's there's no actual evidence behind it he posted on facebook 
Um, stories, what do we got? What do you want to share? Bryn. Hit it, Thank Bryn. Thank you. I had this murder story that I've been waiting to tell. Burn in a hole. Let's go. I know. It is. Okay, guys, so be careful who you love because, you know, they could be crazy and uh, strangle you to death. Yeah, especially um, Montana. <laughs> yeah. So there's this woman named Sandy Moore, um, and she was charged with deliberate homicide after authorities think she may have strangled her 49-year-old significant other. Keep in mind, she was 19 at the time of this, and he was 49. So that's like 30 years old. Yeah. So this was like in January that this happened in Dillon. Um, she's also been charged with tampering evidence, but her mental health has been considered, so she's awaiting a, an evaluation. Um, then there's another chick that's involved in this. Her name's Christina Van, Van Duen. Um, she's 23, and she was charged with um, obstructing justice and conspiracy to tamper with evidence. Um, then there's a dude. His name is Kerry Samuel Johnson. He's 56. He was charged with obstruction of justice. Um, and on the 11th of January, he indicated he may know the location of the body. Um, he had told the police that he had been to the home to repair the washer and dryer. Um, he'd found Coon, which is the dead guy's wallet, but couldn't, like, there was no sign of him. Mm -hmm. Um, authorities were saying that he kind of acted strange and nervous. Um, when they arrived at the house, Moore kind of, like, wouldn't let them in at first and then let them in and said that they'd gotten into a fight, but then um, after they'd gotten into a fight, he had left to go on a walk to cool off. Well, they found him in between the washer and dryer the same day, like literally a few minutes after that, with a bag over his head, and it looked like he had been, like the body had been moved. So that was interesting. <laughs> um, so there was a lot of evidence at the scene and they even found a phone cord that was probably most likely used to strangle the victim. Van Duen told the police that Moore had admitted to killing Kuhn, but Van Duen had, hadn't seen or touched the body, is what she said, despite knowing the exact location and condition of it, which is pretty fishy. Um, Johnson also said he wasn't present and hadn't seen the body or helped move it, but police said it was unlikely work had been done. So that kind of contradicts his prior statements of working on the washer and dryer to repair them. Um, all three have pled not guilty, but Johnson's the only one out on bail, and it's fifteen hundred dollars or fifteen thousand for him. Moore and Van Duen's bail is set at two hundred thousand, and that trial is ongoing on Zoom. Oh, are they seriously doing this? I think so. If you guys are interested, oh, Supreme Court hearings are being done um, via teleconference. You can watch them on C-SPAN now. Ooh. You can't you can't see them, but you can listen to Supreme Court hearings. Oh. So to get back to that, so they can still wrap up by mid June like they normally do. So uh, my verdict is they're all guilty. Yes. So yeah. Allegedly. Yes. No, 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 no. She's not alleging anything. This is her verdict. She's not investigating. Oh. Okay. Allegedly. So long. <laughs> I think Montana's the only one that has some of the craziest people ever. Oh, besides like Florida. Yeah. Besides Florida. Okay. Because, like, you gotta think, we had the Unabomber in Lincoln. We had apparently several killings. Oh, yeah. Meth. But, like, and meth. oh, yeah. but guys, meth, like, the northern half of California is just meth. I mean, not maybe just meth, but a lot of meth. Some heroin sprinkled in there. <laughs> Northern just California. Just some cocaine. <laughs> I mean, let's, let's get our generalizations about drug abuse in America right. <laughs> Drugs in America, that's all I need to know. Drug abuse is, is, is not okay. Drug abuse is not the way. Word. Thank you, Reagan. Uh, any waiting. other stories out there? I got a story. Go for it. Okay. Speaking of Florida, do you know what in Florida is considered an essential business? Wrestling. Uh, 
the WWE. Mm-hmm. Yep, wrestling. Okay, so on April 9th, it was announced that the WWE in uh, the state of Florida was uh, considered a essential business by uh, the governor, Ron DeSantis. Uh, later that day, he announced not just WWE, but any sport that's going to be broadcast on national television had the freedom to run Florida as long as there were no spectators of the business. So we, we talked about this a little bit at the beginning, actually, is that's sort of what the president is pushing for, is that as long as extremely strict social distancing is observed, um, he's okay with America going back to like having sports. So that would mean, you know, empty stadia and all that sort of stuff is I know MLB has floated the idea of basically making the leagues for baseball this season, just Cactus League in Arizona and um, Grapefruit League in Florida, and then splitting each of those in half because it's, it's relatively evenly distributed already for spring training and then just have a truncated season in that form. But I don't know. All I know is that the Dodgers still have not given me a refund for the baseball game I was going to go to over spring break, and that's making me mad. Are they going to even try to give you a refund? They damn well better. I was going to ask about that. I, was, I thought no, you were supposed to go to California over spring break. Yeah. This Ticketmaster, where I bought my Padres tickets for spring break, is just basically saying, nope, you're not getting that back which blows, but I still have like Dodgers tickets and Angels tickets that I would like to get, you know, a rather substantial amount of money back for. Sell them. To whom? eBay. I don't know. You would be tickets. They're literally just on my phone. Ah. I got all my tickets up here. Well, can you realize people are buying like paintings that aren't worth $250 for $250 on eBay, right? Like, nobody wants my, like, opening day Angels digital picture. I don't think. I'm uh, not. Well, I thought it was, like, an actual, like, ticket. No, no. I, I, MLB will not sell you, like, hard-form tickets anymore. You have to buy it from the individual website and then keep it in an app on your phone, which is fine, Like, I mean, it worked out for me, like, last year. Like, last year I went to a couple games in Philadelphia with my dad. One of his friends works there, got us better tickets, and I was able to literally sell the phone to the people sitting next to me on the subway to the Phillies game, like, phone to phone. Nice. I I mean, I think they did it more because, like, I offered them a cheaper price, and we were both teachers talking about, like, ed tech. But, you know, it worked out for me. I made my money back. All right. I miss baseball. I'm playing baseball on my PlayStation. It's not the same thing. You have a PlayStation? I do. I have a PlayStation. Game attack. <laughs> it's your gamer tag. No. Would you no. add me on PlayStation? <laughs> no. You're like the fifth person who's asked. Like, I get like texts on remind like once a week. It's like, can we play with you? And it's like, still no. no. Why not? Just like some Minecraft or something. I've never once played <laughs> Minecraft. And I've only been in the same room as people playing Minecraft once. Okay, well, I think it's yeah. like you guys doing it in class when you're not supposed to, which is definitely happening. I'm playing hey, Minecraft got, right now. Husky literally had like a whole unit on Minecraft, so. I mean, that's awesome. Like, I, I can't think of a good way to do, like, if I were given the summer, I could probably do like, we're going to use the Modern Warfare trilogy to like talk about like international relations, but um, I don't have the time to do that now, so we're not going to. <laughs> and I'm trying to think of like other I mean you could easily do like a US or like a world history class using Civ but no you're no fun and I don't know what I would do like I don't think I could use Final Fantasy to teach anything and I'm out of Switch games so there you go like I don't think you can teach anything with like Zelda Mario Kart <laughs> How yeah, to drive. Mario Kart is all about like Mario Kart is the epitome of, um, like, libertarianism. Is like, stay out of my way or I'll destroy you. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best way to do. Hello, Brooks Cat. Just my baby. Oh. My dog has decided she wants to go outside, but she's going to have to wait. She's got to go for a short car ride when I moved my car, and now his paws are all muddy. 
oh, the back of my car is just all dirt because I kept taking the dog out for hikes when it was nice before it got all swampy again. But it's not supposed to snow anymore, so which means... No, it's so freaking nice outside. It is. Oh, yeah. It's supposed to be like 66 degrees on Monday. Don't ask why I pointed out Monday. I, so I, I, got, I got more, but if anyone else has a story, go ahead. Y'all got any more stories? No. I got one. I don't know why I didn't do this for my current events, but I thought of it while this was going on. Like yesterday or the day before, Trump wanted the U.S. government to like start like making orders that said, we're the only ones that can mine the moon. And he like had this whole speech in it and he like fixed it in like, this is part of America's manifest destiny. And I was just like, is he aware of the fact that there's an international agreement that we signed in the 1950s that says nobody can own anything in space? I don't think he does. People have you, you know, have you heard that. the man talk? I mean, probably not. Yeah, right? I don't think he realizes, like, what his own party base wants. I'm not totally sure he knows he's president. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you can't, you can't own the moon, or else we would literally own the moon already. Oh God, that was good. Sorry. I like that one, Hannah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um. Yeah. No, the president. I don't. I don't know what international mining looks like in space, but I'm pretty sure it's the exact same thing where you can't do it. Apparently, NASA found a um a planet that is very similar to Earth and could possibly sustain life. Once we get a generation ship working, then we'll get people there in like 4 million years. Bad. There's a movie, it's very depressing on Hulu called, um, oh, what is it, Aniara, that's literally about that. It's just a ship that is lost in space and the people trying to survive in it. It's a bummer. Oh my God. Well, Danish people are depressing, or Swedish people, whoever made it. Swedish. Swedish oh, people. yeah, they're like- There's not a single happy Swedish movie that's ever been made. <laughs> we're just sad <laughs> based this solely on watching a lot of Bergman movies but yeah. if you are looking for something fun to watch I watched all of McMillions over the last couple of days and that is excellent oh, my, my mother's been watching that she really enjoyed that it's, it's crazy but it's good it's crazy. the documentary on Joe Exotic is also really good Tiger King that is like I won't even watch it. It is just they're crazy. It's, it's a bunch yeah, of it's, trash. Cat people are like big cat people. They're just why? Oh, cat, big cat people are a different kind of psychotic. Yes, clearly because they're like <laughs> eating their spouses to them and like murdering big cats when they stop being like you know, profitable. It's terrifying. I. I got another story, if you want to hear Sorry, it. Jack. We always want to hear your stories, Jack. Have you guys ever heard, have you guys heard of Fight Island? That's not gonna happen. <laughs> you wait, it's okay? Happen. It's gonna happen. No, Dana White wants to be the villain of, like, Mortal Kombat. <laughs> he doesn't Mortal want to, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bloodsport, by the way, a terrible movie from the 80s is free on uh, on YouTube with commercials. Okay. So. <laughs> if it's what has commercials, it's not free. <laughs> you don't have to pay for it, sassy. <laughs> walking, it's okay. Brooke's just in her communist phase. Oh my god. I'm always in the communist phase. person when she puts makeup on. So. <laughs> I'm having a breakdown. I can't decide if I'm going to dye my hair or shave it off. <laughs> half and half. Of the two, you should You're probably dye that. <laughs> well, Don't people tell me off. to get bangs, too, but my hair's so curly. If I got bangs, they'd probably just stick straight up. Just do, like, the, the Natalie Dormer thing from the last um, uh, Catching Fire, the uh, Hunger Games one. Just, like, shave the side. Just of shave the one Yeah, that's side. what I was thinking. The side right here. Mm-hmm. There you and go. And then dyeing it, like, dark red again or something. Go full emo. <laughs> you you don't know what full emo looks like. You did not go to high school during emo. I went to high school during emo. It's terrifying. I lived with high school during emo. My sister had 
oh my god, she wore pacifiers around her neck. It was crazy. Yep. I never, I watched her go through an emo phase and I decided that combat boots were enough for me. <laughs> yeah, we don't have the emo haircuts for guys anymore, which is oh. good. Those were terrifying. Yeah. Oh, all right. Sorry. I have people literally messaging me on Remind asking about this, like, as we're in the middle of it, so. Okay. Why? What are they saying? Who is it? Call no. them out. No. Why yeah. not? Just asking if it was mandatory or not, and if they yeah. should turn stuff in and when it would get graded. Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> not mandatory. We'll be graded when I get around to it. Last week's stuff will be in gradebook by Sunday. That's sort of the game plan for that, is I graded a couple times throughout the week, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then I put it in all at once. You can see what you got on the individual assignments if you go into classroom, but I'm not going to put them into power school until I have the rest of them turned in. It also emails it to you, or it does to me, it emails it every time to me I get an assignment put in. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it gives me like an email mm -hmm. notification that's like, oh, he graded this, look at it. <laughs> yeah. 10 out of 10 there's, or there's 5 some out comments, of 5. And then I also yeah. send out emails to everybody that hasn't turned stuff in. So if you've gotten that, that is not bespoke for you. That gets BCC'd to everybody that hasn't turned in. So if you're missing stuff, that's why you get those emails. And next week, I'll tell you right now, will be another set of notes and a quiz. Um, and then the other thing is sort of, kind of actually what we talked about today, is as like a reflection on your own personal political philosophy, what matters most to you and why, that sort of thing. Hmm. What matters most sort of most get you in the mindset for the bill project, which I think we're starting, like you guys will start writing stuff up on that in two weeks. We'll have like- Is that when we get to openly debate about it? We got to figure out a way to do that, but it's on the table. That would be kind of fun. Yeah. You could all go to Memorial Park and stand six feet apart from each other. Oh my yes. god. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> broke up a basketball game because there were like seven kids from the high school playing. Wait, what? Wait, can you say that again? Kids were playing basketball over Bryant yesterday, I heard, and um, the cops went over there and like told them to leave because there were like seven of them. Oh, there oh, yes. oh. Okay, I was in Bryant, but... um. While I was on my run a few days ago, I saw friends of mine were playing basketball, and then I told them not to do that. Yeah, I yelled at them that they're fucking idiots. Well, I saw um, yes. Trey Martin and one of his buddies playing tennis at Lucky Park, but there was Next only two of them. Trey, there. tell him to turn in his stuff. <laughs> okay, I was actually gonna park and say hi to them because that's how like much social interaction I've gotten zero. Mm -hmm. But I didn't because I figured that'd also be kind of really freaking weird. <laughs> I mean, maybe a little bit, but yeah, no. Whenever you see anybody from this class out and about, tell them to turn their stuff in because there's, you know, a possibility that they haven't turned something in. There's yet. like a two in four chance that they haven't? No, it's not that much. It's <laughs> like a one in five, probably. <laughs> but yeah. Good Lord. I like doing your notes because you always put a picture in the middle of it. Of you and your dog or something. See, that's how I know that people are watching when I get those comments. So they're not in everyone, they're just like randomly in there or when like I need to like stop in the middle of them because the dog has decided to like jump on things very loudly or like chew directly next to the microphone and needs to be put in her crate. And, then <laughs> it'll, cut and it'll just be a picture of me. Like a dog that. break. And then I go back to it. <laughs> it just goes for 20 seconds, you just hear breathing. <laughs> I mean, kind of, yeah. She's, she's been pretty good. She's she stumped around a couple times, but uh, I've learned to take notes and then watch your lectures. That's a I solid take the main. I have no. Uh, issue I take the main notes and then people like read books too. Is like if you're reading a big book, read the synopsis first and then read the book. Uh, I'm gonna go. Thank you very much for doing this, Mr. Polking. You bet. Bye, Jack. Um, we'll do, Bye, Jack. Yeah. Bye, Jack. See you on Thursday. Yeah. Um, anything else, folks? What else we got? I mean, um, I have a story. Video games. So, what's up, Alex? Um, uh, NASA contracted SpaceX to do uh, the first man.
in flight since the space shuttle. Uh, and the target for the launch is May 27th now. Does that seem reasonable or are they going to push back again? Uh, I think it seems reasonable since uh, all of SpaceX's stuff with their Dragon capsule has gone pretty well. Like, are they still doing, I thought I saw yesterday that they're sending a new crew up to the ISS like this week? Mm, probably on Soyuz in Russia, but they do that a lot in Russia. So. Yeah, it is, I mean, Russia did a thing where they're like, we're not locking down and then immediately locked down Moscow like five minutes later. Hmm. <clears throat> is it true that you know, Putin doing Putin stuff? Is it true that they like let tigers or lions and stuff roam around the streets? <laughs> no, I saw uh, that. Uh, I saw that, that a couple days ago. Was just did, did you fact check this? No, I was just not paying attention. I just saw that and I'm like, oh, okay, and just kept scrolling. No, nope. no, that was like a completely ironic meme. Like, okay. I wasn't I remember sure. That was going to yeah. prove my point. <laughs> Don't judge. Too late. Great. Hey, hey, can I post memes in the text? chat? It's poking. Oh, you expect yeah. no judgment? That's ridiculous. Very true. Very true. Can't be helped. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my god. I got nothing else for you. Um. So I'm going to go take my dog out. If you want, I can leave this meeting open or I can just close it down and kick you all out. I'm going to leave too, so it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're all probably going to leave and just talk to whoever we want to talk to on chat. <laughs> Red. Okay, then. then, if that is the case, I am going to close this down. We, um, You'll get the email on Sunday as per usual. And um, we'll do... Um, class or office hours or whatever next Thursday and I think scheduling right now has another current event in like three weeks just because I don't want to load you guys with too much homework. Thanks. Okay. Appreciate it. Okay. All right. Sweet. Later folks. Have a good one. Later. Bye everyone. Bye. 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 Three, two, one. Closed. <laughs>